my friends, welcome to a new week. So my name is Heidi and you can find me at Books and Cables on both Ravelry and Instagram. And this is going to be a really exciting week full of yarny content I think because I have my midnight tomorrow night as well as um, on Thursday Wabi Sabi has their knit night which happens every two weeks. It's the local yarn store here in Ottawa but also on Friday they, it's their 10th birthday, so they're going to have a birthday party. And then I think because of that, they're going to have a knitting, a knit in on, or a stitch in on um, Sunday from 1 to 3 as well. So it's going to be lots of friends and knitting in public this week, I think. So um, the reason why I skipped filming is because I was really close to finishing my... Um, throwback sweater so I wanted to be able to just show you once it was finished rather than continue to give minor progress updates. So here it is, the throwback sweater. So the only thing that's missing now is the steak and the button band. So um, I think what I'm going to do right now is flip the camera around and do the cutting before I block it and pick up the stitches for the button band. So just let me get my scissors out. All right, so I have my sweater down on the table and you can see here that I've done some steaking stitches in these um, strips. Previously I've done checkerboard, but I found it really hard to see where I was cutting because what you want to do is, um, so there's five steaking stitches. so. Um, one, two, three, four, five. You can tell because there's these, um, it's where, it's basically where these long bands of just the gray is. And you want to cut this blue one in the middle, right in the middle of it. And I found when I did the checkerboard pattern, it was really hard to see where to cut. And I kind of started drifting. And I didn't, I'm not going to do any reinforcement on this um, wool because it is Icelandic and fairly sticky so it um, should not require any reinforcement to stay together. So I just want to make sure I'm still in the shot here. Okay so here is my steaking stitches and I want to cut right here. And I always hold it underneath just to make sure I don't accidentally cut through on the other side. And the one thing I want to mention too, I forgot to, is I've left all my ends sort of, I started the row in the middle of the steaking stitches, that way the ends are just kind of floating there because then I don't have to weave in any of the ends, I just cut them off basically during this process. And they become um, just part of the, the little strands that end up in the middle. Okay, so I won't cut all the way down because I have the camera set up kind of precariously. All right, so here it is fully cut. And now what I'm going to do is put it in a bath and lightly block it. Here are the edges which have just rolled over. You can see it's not really unraveling here. The stitches are staying in place. And for everyone who likes to see the inside of the color work. Okay, so the reason why I'm not going to pick up the button band until I've blocked it is because what blocking will do is even out these stitches so that it makes it a little bit easier to see them when I'm picking it up. I also thought it'd be funny to show you the fact that I don't have a big enough bin to do the blocking in, so I just use this teeny tiny one. And so when I... it barely fits and it pretty much soaks up all the water as soon as I put it in. Friends, happy Monday. Just doing a quick check-in before I head off to bed. 
Um, I've had an excellent evening full of knitting because I went to my regular knit night on Monday and I brought my birds wish a feather shawl and now I'm done the last lace section which I don't know am I dumb or am I just bad at knitting lace because I always end up with like one or two stitches extra and then I'm like mm, should I go back and redo some oh, just add a stitch it's fine and then decrease one here and there so anyway this is a pretty basic lace so you can't tell the difference so um, I don't know if I'll, I'll even know where the errors are but uh, there I only have let's see uh, a mohair section a garter section I think another mohair section and then the border so I think four four left so maybe I can finish it tomorrow if I um, if I focus on that completely um, the reason I'm working on this again is because I'm still waiting for my uh, throwback sweater to dry to be able to do the border. I'm hoping that I'll be able to wear it to the knit night at Wabi Sabi on Thursday. That would be nice to show off my my new sweater. Um, actually, I was saying tonight that I started my throwback on September 24th, which means it's my fastest sweater ever. Well, I'm not technically finished it. The button bands are not done, so I guess it's not officially done, but I did most of the knitting within eight days. So I think that's my fastest sweater ever. It is a worsted weight, so I don't know if I'll count it. It's Or it's a little bit, it's basically almost bulky, but I don't know if I'll count it. But um, otherwise, my other fastest sweater this year was a month. And everything else I maybe could have finished, but since I didn't do the sleeves, I don't want to count those. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, you'll see I did I did film a little clip that I probably put in earlier that I had to have a sad salad tonight because I'm trying to figure out what my food allergies are right now. So I've cut out dairy and gluten at the moment to see if that's gonna help. So I had the, the kale salad and a matcha protein bar that was gluten and also dairy free. And um, yeah, actually the bar was pretty delicious, but the, I just don't like eating salads because like I get tired of chewing in the middle. I feel like I'm a cow. Like I'm just, anyway. Hey friends, um, I might be talking a little bit quieter today because I, actually have a sinus infection right now so my brain is thudding but um, since I took the day to recover I did have some time to finish this little baby behind me so I'm just styling it for some photos for Instagram right now. I'm just trying to find a way to put it so that it kind of drapes you know like the way you see photos I think. Finally got it. It is heavier weight on one side than the other. So this is my birds of a feather shawl that I started at the beginning of uh, no, on Labor Day weekend when I went to visit Montreal, and it is in hedgehog fibers, and it is so soft, and I just wanted it against my skin all the time. Yeah, and I'm trying to figure out a way to style it for photos. So I had I I've seen people do sort of this sort of pose oh that's a good one i should take a screenshot of that and then you know you can kind of have it flipped over your shoulder like this the problem is i take all my photos myself and i try to use my better camera and there's no way of controlling the both the focus and um, making sure it um, takes the photo when i'm ready so usually what i do is use the portrait mode which is like the it um, when it senses a f my camera has a mode where if it senses a face it'll take it'll um, take a photo in three seconds. So I think I got some nice shots that are gonna go up on Instagram. But now I'm just trying to figure out maybe it'll look better if it's not on to be able to show off all the different textures that are in it. And I just like kind of. <laughs> having it over my head like this because it's very cozy. <laughs> I think that's a look. 
<laughs> um, yeah, thought it'd be interesting to show what goes into all the photos that go on an Instagram feed. So usually what I, the difference but I use between Instagram stories and Instagram feeds is Instagram stories where I show progress and sort of rougher drafts of photos, whereas um, the actual, um, the actual wall is where I put all of my good copies of photos. So I'm just trying to figure out the best way to show it off. Maybe I should just go with this, the good one. Um, I forgot to mention it is Thursday today and I skipped filming a few days because I wasn't feeling very well and I just didn't have very much progress to show. After I finished my um, throwback, I decided it, I washed it and then I was trying to figure out, I actually quite like it without the button band because it doesn't interrupt the pattern. So I'm not sure what, um, what I'm gonna do. Actually, I'll go grab it and show you. Okay, so here it is after I blocked it and it fits wonderfully. And I have the, uh, the sleeves all rolled up. So what do you guys think? Should I add a button band here? Because I feel like, I feel like that would disrupt the pattern. And I really like how it looks now. And the, the original pattern, I just realized it doesn't actually call for a button band. It's just a, just a rib finish. So I feel like it works like this now. I've, as usual, just left my sticking edges. <laughs> to hang because I'm pretty confident in that it won't unravel. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, really loving how beautiful this, these colors turned out. And um, I think this is my, only my third sweater of the year. I've started lots, haven't finished any. My original goal, like I said, had been to finish 12, but I think, uh, We'll just, well, let's just see where it goes. There's no point of putting so much pressure on your knitting. Okay. Oh. Hey, I'm just on my way to Wabi Sabi now. I just got home from Wabi Sabi. It was such a fun night. Uh, I met and chatted with so many people. Um, and unfortunately, I did not get out of it unscathed in terms of my no buying. So I'm gonna show you what I got. I got three balls of this drop silk mohair because I saw the most glorious ranunculus on Yan Hong today and um, I decided I needed one. And this is the exact color I had started my ranunculus in, but I just don't like the way it looks. It's just, the stitches are a little bit too defined and I, it's meant to be heavily textured, but I think it would just look better as a hazy sort of texture. So I'm gonna restart it. It's basically the same colors, but it's gonna be a lot more, um, relaxed and loose and 
maybe a little bit cropped as well because I'm not exactly sure if I finished it. But I also made the quite silly commitment that I would finish, so today's Friday, that I would finish the ranunculus by Sunday when I go to Wabi Sabi again for their stitching. So we'll see. Oh, I also got something else. And everyone said it was like we were in a cult because we all had these wrist rulers. So I've been very bad. So since I'm running a day behind on my recording schedule already, I think this is going to be the end of this episode. Um, thank you so much for watching. And if you want to find me on social media, you can find me at Books and Cables on both Instagram and Ravelry. And um, I'll see you guys next time.